If a car looks fast, you'd expect it to be fast. Well, that's not always the case. Hey guys, I'm Stipe, and this is my list of the slowest sporty cars ever made. Let's do this. Number seven. My hate for the smart car is well documented on this channel, but the Roadster, yeah, I like that one. I like its funky design, the compact size, and the fact that it's essentially a road legal toy car. My only wish is that it was at least faster than a toy car. The problem comes from the dreaded 4.2, and it's this. The Roadster shares the same 700cc turbocharged three-cylinder engine capable of producing 80 horses, or in some models, even less. The last time something sporty had less horsepower than that, it was raced around the Circus Maximus. As you'd expect, the performance is virtually non-existent. Zero to 60 takes longer than it takes to give birth to a child. And as for the top speed, well, the Roadster isn't even the fastest smart car you can buy. Speaking of things that are not fast, the gearbox. It may be a sequential one, like in rally cars, but pull the lever in the Roadster and... Feels like watching porn when the internet connection is bad. And yet, I still like it. The smart Roadster is zippy. It has great handling, makes a nice noise, and is genuinely an exciting little sports car. But don't take just my word for it. Top Gear also named it their best fun car of the year 2005. Nice. Number six. In the olden days, when you saw an AMG Mercedes, you saw a tire shredding monster with a volcanic amount of power under the hood. And you couldn't miss it because AMG models stood out properly. Just compare this OG hammer with the regular W124. And now compare the 2015 CLA 45 AMG with the CLA 180D AMG line from the same year. They look the same, but one has a 380 horsepower four cylinder in all wheel drive, while the other one has a 1.5 Renault diesel engine, which drives the fronts only. One has a throaty exhaust note. And the other has exhaust tips blocked by a piece of plastic. One has these little arrow thingies, while the other one, they're missing. That's pretty much it. They look the same, but don't cost the same. So if you're a gold digger, good luck figuring out if your potential sugar daddy is loaded or not. Mind you, Mercedes are not the only Germans that offer the cosmetic sports styling package with their lesser models. Audi has the S line, VW has the R line, and BMW has M Sport. But I'm picking on the CLA 180D AMG because visually the differences are the smallest, but performance wise, the gap is so big that the evergreen boat sailed right on through it. Number five. Say that you drive a Ferrari and everyone will think that you live your life in the fast lane. But if that Ferrari is a Mondial 8, you better keep out of that lane because you don't want to slow everybody else down. Yes, Ferrari made a limping car more than once, actually, but the Mondial 8 was the worst fender. While the underpowered 208 could be forgiven because it was a response to the Italian tax policies on engine sizes, the Mondial can't use the same excuse. It had a full-size V8 engine, had more power too. And yet, it was slower than the 2-liter 208. 0-60 took 9.5 seconds, and that's if you were lucky and the car didn't break down due to its novel but completely unreliable fuel injection system. The focus on practicality and luxury certainly didn't make it any more dynamic either. Not when those things come with the extra weight. But still, it's a Ferrari. It should be able to overtake a van no matter how thick the leather seats are. Isn't that what's expected? I'll you explain this to your friend. If only there was a convertible Mondial 8, then you could lie about having a toupee, and that's why you don't want to speed it up. But such models were only offered on newer, faster versions, so I guess it's best to just admit it. This Ferrari goes slow because it is slow. Deal with it. Number 4 This might be a controversial pick, but I know if I hadn't mentioned it, the comments section would be full of people asking, Hey, where's the Miata? You forgot the Miata! So for the millionth time on the internet, is Miata slow? <sighs> yes. The first generation could be had with as little as 88 horsepower, but even the meteor ones with 130 horses were struggling to break the 9 second mark to 60. That's slow. For comparison, most hot hatches were faster than that. Generally, if the car is lacking practicality, it should at least give you more power in return, otherwise it's just an all-around bad car. But considering how well it sold, it couldn't have been bad. 
That's because Mazda traded practicality not for power, but something even better. Fun. The Miata was purposely made weak, light, and agile. It loves to rev, and it can easily take on any corner at full throttle. You simply glide through it and come out the other end with a huge smile on your face. Try the same in any other sports car and you'll come out in a coffin. <laughs> Having less power means you can use it without overdosing on it, which is why even the newer Miatas are refusing to give you too much of it. It's not an issue. It's the reason why it's so good. Oh, God, it's so good. Number three. You've seen the movie. You've seen the trail of fire this car leaves behind when it accelerates. You've seen the gullwing doors and the mid-engine layout. So I'll forgive you if you think, wow, that car must have been fast. It wasn't. Just look at the Speedo. Despite having a V6 sitting in the back, the DeLorean made only 130 horsepower, which is not a lot, while the resulting 0-60 to 60 in 9.5 seconds is a lot. Tectonic plates move faster than that. But don't blame it all on the car. This was still a time of energy crisis and new emission standards which mercilessly choked all performance vehicles. The Corvette from the same year was producing just 190 horsepower from a 350 cubic inch V8. And that was the most powerful car you could buy in America. Maybe, like the others on the list, the DMC-12 could corner fast. After all, the chassis and the handling were done by Lotus, so this is to be expected. Sadly, some last-minute changes ruined all the good work that Lotus had done. And before this could have been fixed, it was already time to package it and ship it to the customers. The soon-to-be-disappointed customers. In the end, the only fast thing about the DMC-12 was how fast it went out of production. Number two. I've mentioned the Corvette and how it struggled with the emission standards, but this is worse. When the Greenpeace choke came, Ford completely abandoned the idea of selling Mustang as a muscle car and instead turned it into a sporty, compact fastback. Well, as sporty as it can be, given that it shared much of the mechanics with the Pinto. And guess what? It worked. People were still buying them, even if these new Mustangs, the Mustang 2s as they called them, could be had with as low as 88 horsepower out of a four-cylinder. Mmm, sporty. <laughs> but what about the top end? What about the King Cobra version? Just from looking at it, you can tell it means business. Look at the body kit. Look at the size of that engine. That's a 5.0, baby. This Mustang has been going to the gym and taking steroids to grow some bigger muscles. But you know what also happens when you take steroids? Your balls shrink. How else would you describe these numbers other than impotent? A 5 liter V8 that makes 140 horsepower only? That's 28 horsepower per liter, which is less than what you get out of a bottle of Coke and some Mentos. King Cobra? King Cobra my ass! The only king that this can be is a King Eunuch. Number 1. A Berkeley Sports? What's that, some kind of cricket club for rich white kids? No, it's an old British car, one of the slowest ones in existence, and yet the guy who made it still had the audacity to call it sports. Let me give you the headline figure. 0 to 50 to 50 takes over 30 seconds, while 60 is only available when going downhill. <laughs> you serious? The reason for this, as always, lies under the hood. It's got a 320cc two-stroke motorcycle engine which produces as much power as an actual horse. 15. Yes, a horse makes more than one horsepower. A horse also accelerates faster than this Berkeley, despite weighing more, but what are we doing here? We're comparing a car to an animal, 70 years after the car already replaced them as our preferred way to move around. How did we end up here again? On the plus side, the Berkeley Sports is incredibly light, 600 pounds, which is about the same as many shoppers at Walmart. This is thanks to its tiny size and its absolute lack of any features. It doesn't even have a fuel gauge, which is another thing it shares with the Walmart shoppers. But still, 15 horsepower? I wonder if that's enough for it to pull itself from an underground garage. Probably best to put it in its carrying case when dealing with such hills. Joking over, can you guess these other three slow sporty cars? 